Look, the simple fact is the cost of housing in San Diego is ridiculous. Uh, it is uh, exorbitantly high. And, and uh, housing ought to be affordable for working class folks, folks who get up every day and work and work hard. Uh, they ought to be able to find a place to live. And we know that there's a lot of factors and things that go into that, but we want to do everything we possibly can to find solutions, to find locations, and find ways uh, that we can invest in building affordable housing uh, right here in San Diego County. Uh, I will also tell you as a, as a parent, between my wife and I, we have five kids, uh, hopefully grandkids one day, I want them to be able to afford a house here too. And so we are going to continue to push and leave no stone unturned in finding uh, ways that, that affordable housing can be built in San Diego County. And we're here today to highlight something that the County of San Diego has been doing, which I have the honor of chairing, and also something MTS is doing, uh, which I also have the honor of chairing, and that is identifying government-owned land, identifying land that we own that is underutilized, and figuring out how can we convert it into housing, which is one of the most pressing uh, public policy issues that we face. Uh, where we are standing right here uh, is the site of a county-owned parcel of land uh, that we are making available for housing. And, and he wasn't able to join us today, but I want to thank Council President Elo Rivera uh, for his work in building community support between the, the, the possibility or what I would say the, the plan and moving forward with of putting affordable housing here. Uh, but between us, we are all working. The County of San Diego, MTS, uh, both entities, we now have nine properties. Uh, that are out there and available. That is more than 13 acres uh, that we are putting out to affordable housing developers and saying, bring us your best proposal. Bring us a proposal to actually build housing that is affordable on these sites, uh, and let's move forward. If you want to build in a city center, we've got properties available for you. If you want to build near a transit stop, we have properties for you. If you want to build near neighborhood and, and commercial corridors, we have properties for you. And so today we are highlighting this effort in this program. And for folks who want to contact the county about properties we have available, uh, developers can pre-register by emailing dgsassetmanagement at sdcounty.ca.gov. Uh, the RFPs for the three properties are going to be posted later this week at sdcre.com. To contact MTS about our six properties, you can visit sdmts.com slash real estate. Uh, and this announcement that we're making today is not the first time uh, that our two agencies have worked to try and tackle the housing crisis. Uh, we have invested more than $23 million of county funds to support four different projects that together will deliver hundreds of units of housing, housing for seniors, for people with disability, for those that have experienced homelessness, people with behavioral health challenges. Uh, in Ramona on uh, excess county land, we have the Paseo Norte Apartments going. Uh, in the Claremont area, we have the Tower Mensa uh, on excess county land moving in the Mountain Edna area of Claremont. Uh, we have the Iris at San Ysidro, the Santa Fe Apartments in Vista, uh, and other projects as well. Uh, we also contributed $14 million for the 407 units we just opened at St. Teresa of Calcutta. Uh, we broke ground in February on 100, 100 affordable housing units for low-income folks in San Marcos, um, which we contributed from our Affordable Housing Trust Fund. We also broke ground in January on an uh, apartment complex called the Valley Senior Village in downtown Escondido uh, for older folks and those suffering from mental health illness. Uh, we partnered with National Core and Community Housing, providing uh, $10 million in funding for that. Later this year, we expect more properties will be coming before the Board of Supervisors so we can take action to make them surplus property. Uh, but to date, uh, our county, I think, is doing more than it's ever done. Uh, $50 million invested in the Innovative Housing Trust Fund. That $50 million has leveraged $567 million of additional funding uh, to create thousands of units uh, that people can live and call a home. And so we're going to continue to do that as a county. And then MTS also is showing tremendous leadership uh, in this area. When you think of MTS, you think of buses and trolleys. But to the extent MTS owns land where we can put affordable housing, that's good for the folks who get those units, but that's also good as those are almost always right along our transit corridors. And so it makes it easier for folks to get a home that is connected to transit. Uh, our shoreline development, 100% uh, affordable, that's at Grantville. Uh, the union at Grantville, uh, 250 market rate units. And Palm Avenue and South Bay breaking ground, that's almost 400 units. Uh, we also have seven properties that Sharon's going to talk a little bit about that are being negotiated now. And then six parcels 
uh, that we are still looking for developers to, uh, to come in and partner. And so between all of these efforts, uh, I think we're recognizing the need uh, to make more housing units available to figure out how we can build them, how we can build them quickly, uh, and how we can help uh, alleviate the, the burden on, on San Diegans and San Diego working class folks uh, for the real struggles you face in trying to buy a home. We want you to be able to buy a home. We want you to be able to buy a home near where you work. Uh, we want you to be able to buy a home near where your family is. Um, and we want to do that in an affordable way. And so we're all going to continue to press ahead in doing everything that we can. Uh, I would now like to introduce uh, David Estrella, our Director of Housing and Community Development Services, to share some details uh, about a few of these uh, properties and share some, uh, some information on, on how folks can, uh, can bring forward ideas. David? Good morning. My name is David Estrella, and I'm Director of Housing and Community Development Services, uh, Health and Human Services Agency for the County of San Diego. Uh, we're happy to join Supervisor Fletcher in showcasing this property and the many important steps that the county is taking uh, to increase the region's affordable housing inventory. The loss of affordable units, coupled with the continuously raising rent, rising rents, is creating housing instability for thousands of San Diegans across the region. This is why the county is invigorating its efforts to tackle the housing affordability crisis through, the number of, uh, through a number of innovative endeavors particularly taking action by identifying excess county land, just like this one, uh, to create affordable units. To date, the county has five excess sites that are currently in some stage of pre-development for affordable housing development, and three sites that are slated for uh, the pre-development process. By creating and growing the Innovative Housing Trust Fund from $50 million to $70 million, and the next few weeks we'll be announcing additional awards to create hundreds of new units across the region. By implementing the $130 million No Place Like Home program, which creates permanent supportive housing for persons that are homeless or experiencing homeless and have a serious mental illness. The No Place Like Home program has funded 266 units in 10 developments across nine communities. These units are set aside within over 1,000 newly created units and through adding 300 project-based vouchers, which have created units across the San Diego County Housing Authority's jurisdiction. It is very important, now more than ever, that the county takes significant steps to preserve and create affordable housing opportunities throughout the region. And this site is an immediate step towards that effort. I'd like to close my remarks by noting that this is a special day for a historic property. The land we're standing on was bought by the county for $62,500 in 1962. A year later, this building opened as the region's first standalone welfare office. As the neighborhood built up around it, the name changed. Approaches were modernized, and eventually the services moved and evolved to meet today's needs. But fittingly, thanks to Chair Fletcher and the Board of Supervisors, this historic property will now join other county properties in continuing to serve the public, providing critical, affordable housing for future generations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. And I want to make a key point about not just this property, but other county ones. If you're a resident and you need housing, you don't care what jurisdiction is responsible. You don't care what government agency is responsible for doing it. And so when we have county-owned land, in this case, in the city of San Diego, we work with our partners in the city uh, and we come together and, and, and we build housing. And so it's not just the county thinking about the unincorporated area and building more. We're going to do that. But it is how do we look holistically across the county and take any opportunity uh, where we can partner and, and work to get things done. Um, and so, again, it really is a collaboration and partnership in many regards. A lot of the projects we have moving are county owned land in the city of San Diego or in other cities. Um, and we're still willing to, look, let's, let's make that house available, let's build those units, uh, and let's help folks wherever they are. So thank you, David, for that. Um, I also want to uh, welcome and introduce Sharon Cooney, the CEO of MTS. MTS has been moving for a while. Uh, this is not something new uh, for MTS. Uh, we have, have been moving, looking at land we own, figuring out how we make it uh, uh, available to developers, and, and it's a constant thing that the board thinks about a lot. 
And it's not only good for the region, but again, it's good for our transit system. The more housing we get built, transit-oriented development, you can't get any closer than a lot of these parcels that are literally adjacent to uh, a trolley stop or, or on a bus corridor. And so as a region, we should be very grateful for what MTS does with a world-class transit agency, but what they're doing to help the housing. And with that, I'll turn it over to Sharon. Uh, thank you, Chair Fletcher. Um, you know, I'm really excited to be here today to join with our partners at the county to really talk about reimagining what we do with surplus government property. Um, this is something that M MTS has given a renewed focus on since uh, Chair Fletcher uh, began leading our, our um, agency. And obviously, our core mission is to transport people, whether to jobs or education or to healthcare, supermarkets, whatever they need to do during the day. But it is also for that reason, when most people think of MTS, they really think of the red trolleys or the buses. They don't think about us as people who care about making communities, really care about making sure that people have a place to live. Uh, we want to make sure that we are a part of the solution to such a major issue and challenge that is affecting our county. Um, MTS really wants to help spur economic development within the community, but as Chair Fletcher mentioned, these folks will also be future transit riders. And so it's really important for us to provide them with a safe place where they can access transit. Uh, we have a number of transit-oriented developments already. Uh, Grossmont Center was one of them, Lin Marina Linda Vista, that's another one. Um, People don't think about it much, but Smart Corner, the City College uh, Transit Center, that is a true transit-oriented development. Um, in addition, just a couple weeks ago, we started, uh, broke ground on the shoreline of affordable housing development at Grantville. Um, between that and the market rate housing, we'll be able to house over 1,000 people at that site, what used to be just a, a flat parking lot for our riders. Um, but as Chair Fletcher mentioned, we have 17 other parcels, whether they are under contract already for a development or they're going to be available to a new developer to come in and give us an idea about what they'd like to build there. Um, for instance, we have a very large whole city block down by the 12th and Imperial Transit Center. Um, that's my favorite one. I would love to see a really nice development put there. Um, and we have um, another one we'll be taking to the board uh, the MTS board this Thursday uh, to go into an agreement on our buyer boulevards location. So we are having success and we want to have more success. Uh, those who are interested in doing business with MTS uh, visit our real estate dedicated webpage at sdmts.com slash real estate. Um, again, I'd like to thank uh, County Supervisor Chair Fletcher as well as the county itself for helping the region address the housing crisis we face. Uh, we all need to be pulling in the same direction, and this event today demonstrates how we're doing that. Thank you. So when it, when it comes to housing, it is all hands on deck. Uh, your city, your county, MTS, uh, other entities and agencies looking for every opportunity we can uh, to make more land available, to move quickly, uh, and, uh, and build housing that are there. So I wanna thank everyone for being here and really encourage uh, interested developers who are out there uh, please contact our agencies, look at these parcels, and let's find creative solutions. Let's find creative ways uh, that we can work to, uh, to invest in, in lowering the cost of housing and increasing the number of units available. So thank you, everyone, for being here.